Well, this is a massive day for news for Manor Lords, one of the most anticipated and wish-listed games on Steam. This medieval city builder that many speculate will be a total war killer is the most anticipated game of this year, but possibly next year, as we finally have a release date. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be talking about all the news since our last video on Manor Lords and confirming a not only Xbox release for the game on consoles, but also that it's coming to Game Pass and PC everywhere, Steam, GOG, and of course Game Pass on day one with its release date, which I'll tell you in just a moment. But this game is highly anticipated, beautiful, and then had a demo on Steam last year during the summer, and it was amazing. I think it was one of the most uh, widely watched videos and series on the channel, and it was just a demo with the ability to try to retake several different counties and fight other barons and with different game modes and development trees, policies and production, the ability to hire merchants and raise armies and have militias. It's really looking good, and it looks better than it ever did before, and even back then, in the earlier days of the game, it was impressive, made by a very small team, and led by one person, really, and published by a publisher that really is great, Hooded Horse, who's also publishing some other games you may have seen on the channel related to city building and the strategy. Yeah, this publisher, seemingly out of nowhere, and this developer, seemingly out of nowhere, have absolute full passion when it comes to making this game, and yet every day it has gotten better. Now, this game was supposed to release sometime in 2023, and thankfully it's not. The developer has admitted that there's just not enough time to polish, and honestly, I think to myself, well, this game certainly could use all of that, as the developer should by no means feel rushed and should confidently release their product because they've been super ultra mega communicative on both their Discord and on Twitter to ask a lot of people on what they want for features and showing pictures and being like, this would this be a good idea or not? And literally adding features in afterwards. I don't think I've ever seen a developer and a publisher work so closely together and also involve the community to add features without even having a, g a game released, even before early access. And when it does release into early access, we'll have even more to look forward to for this game. So instead of uh, releasing in 2023 with all the clutter and hustle and bustle of games like Starfield and of course, uh, City Skylines 2 and many other big releases and city builders where this gem, this diamond in the rough, no, diamond mine in the rough, would be obscured. Now it finally gets its full glory on April 26, 2024. Yes, April 26, 2024 is when this game will release into early access, and I hope the developer takes their time to then fully release the game over the course of maybe several years. Everything from the menus of this game with all of its gorgeous art to the weather, to the like seasonal transitions, leaves falling off of trees. It's amazing. And one of the biggest things that stood out immediately for me in this game was the buildings, how all the buildings are constructed seemingly piece by piece. You can go into first person, well, kind of a third person mode in this game, but it's almost like seeing the action from third for, uh, f from first person. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's almost as if you could convince somebody that this was a new third or first person uh, medieval adventure game, something along the lines of The Witcher or Kingdom Come Deliverance. So when you go down to that level and play the Lord yourself, you can actually see churches and manors constructed and all of the timber being delivered and planed out. And of course, our boy Fritz is back. One of the biggest and most uh, huge like memes on this channel that's never ended is Fritz, the ox that you can use many of the oxen that you can use at the start of the game to transport logs around to initially cut down trees, build houses, and then move on to building markets and farms and windmills and granaries and then eventually military buildings and your Lord's Manor itself and churches and much more. Yeah, this game is looking impressive. It's really nice to see everyone else hyped about this game too. And with it being, uh, you know, developed and published by people who just want to make good games, there's little chance for mega DLCs and monetization. I think it's just going to be a cut and dry. Here's what the game is. We put all of our heart and soul into it. Please buy it if you'd like type mentality. And that's beautiful. And the great thing is, if you're unsure about this game being one of the most anticipated city builders of all time and or medieval games and or warfare games, 
you can always try before you buy on Game Pass. And I hope a lot of people find out that, wow, this is a real gem and that they hope to get it on Steam and that the developer and the publisher get the most amount of support ever. So that way all the feedback that they've been more than active in responding to on all of those platforms will let us help to influence this game, which already is going in a direction everybody's loving. It's incredible to see all these things on screen from small little housing plots being upgraded to then have things like chickens and carrots and other things, a lot of which I've forgotten from the demo already super comprehensive but it's great to see little tweaks and details and additions to upgrades to your troop systems capturing different counties settling different lands so that way you can then bring them all together where you can then mine iron ore in one stone in another and have fertility uh, for farming in another one like that so very very cool love it actually so I'm really looking forward to the full release on this game and we are absolutely going to play the hell out of this one Without further ado, I wanted to present the uh, trailer then, unabated by me, for Manor Lords, coming out on April 26, 2024, soon to consoles, hopefully within a, a le uh, maybe perhaps at least a year from its release into early access. Let's check it out. You have been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry, but there is another threat an illegitimate baron who claims the Northern Territories as his own. Will you prove yourself worthy of this honor? Or will you perish by the traitor's steel? And there it is, coming to consoles on April 26, 2024, Manor Lords. The wait is going to be a very long time, but I don't think because of the time, really it's more of the anticipation for how good this game is that is really going to increase the wait for it. I mean, the anticipation, the hype, the wish listing, the uh, previous times that we've played this, and everybody's opinion on it has really gotten everyone excited, and the developer too, into trying to making the best game ever. And uh, really, it's going to be a heavy hitter, I think, when it comes to city builders. And oftentimes, when I look at this, it feels like a version of Stronghold that we never got, a mod of possibly Ostrave or Foundation, which are two other wonderful city builders that we played on the channel before, with lots of realism and, of course, you know, weather effects and whatnot. Looking back at some of this older pre-alpha footage, you can see here in the lower left corner, it actually looks a little, um, not bad, but it certainly looks a few steps back from what we've just seen in the release trailer, which is just announcing the release. The developer still has multiple months to polish and bug fix and work on the appearance of the game, but honestly, this is leaps and bounds ahead already of what I would have expected for an early access game in this pre-alpha footage. This was even before we received a demo for the game as the developer was doing internal testing and getting people together to get their opinion and to bug fix and to basically set up all the systems and pathfind all the way through 
to what would be hopefully a very fun game, which it was during the demo, and I'm very excited to see more. All these systems of research, development, trade, mercenaries, warfare, and uh, of course different levels of quote-unquote campaigns that we may see, or different game modes that will present more of an economic challenge, or more of a military challenge. And the overall goal, as we heard, is a Baron has taken over the northern lands, and we're tasked with going and kicking his ass and getting him out of there. And that's something that really reminds me of perhaps Stronghold. Yeah, I, I hesitate to say anything because I really am excited for the new version of Stronghold coming out, Stronghold Definitive Edition, which every time I play Manor Lords, I think of all the games that I mentioned. And that's one of the things that's near and dear to my heart about Stronghold is that you're tasked with rescuing the king by taking out other lords or illegitimate claimers of the throne and other counties and whatnot. And this game seems to be that uh, in a way that I really truly think that development of games today is impossible without being inspired by so many other games. I mean, think about uh, by the time you're smart enough and wise enough and resourceful enough to be able to be able to make these types of games, you probably are already played tons of different games uh, before this one, uh, before making this one. Uh, at least that, that's what I would assume is the developer's uh, background here, as we all, as gamers, would like to make a game just like this. Whether or not it's a medieval city builder or a modern city builder uh, or a military simulator, whether it's first or third person, whether or not it's top down uh, or whatever, uh, this is, I think, the game that we all would want to make and that we expect developers to make, and yet, yet again, leave it up to indie developers to break through and just do something that otherwise would be impossible without 45 DLCs and tons of extra updates and whatnot. And this game is not different from that. The developer will release this into early access. We will be purchasing. I'll be purchasing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> whether or not uh, they give a million people keys or nobody, I, this is a game that I absolutely would be proud to have in my Steam library and showcase to everyone. And, uh, you know, whether or not they uh, take a year or five years to make all the content they hope to make in this game, you're still buying, you know, an incomplete game in early access, but yet again, going back to what I had said about all the development of this game before the demo and since the demo, before its release into early access, I mean, th this is promising beyond belief. This is so, um, I I'm so hopeful for the future of other games from developers such as the folks who also made uh, Dave the Diver. And it goes to show that graphics aren't everything. Although this game is absolutely gorgeous, I feel like this would just be as fun well received and very challenging to be able to do all these things even if it looked quite a bit different but i've got to say it still looks absolutely breathtaking really it looks like you're almost in an editor for a highly modified version of skyrim or the witcher or uh, kingdom come deliverance and we're looking at some footage now of me playing a, an early access demo from before and so uh, you know forgive some of the uh, you know older footage and uh, earlier versions of it but i really want to take a look at where this game was before where it was during the demo and where it'll end up uh next year and and that's going to be about a, a month uh, or rather, uh, I think maybe 18 months uh, from the demo. So over a year and a half, uh, or roughly, since we were able to play the Manor Lords demo. And uh, all that feedback and stuff was just absolutely wonderful. And I think it was a great decision from the developer to do that and to take their time to then reach out for each thing, adding things to the churches and to the houses and different gameplay methods. And I think that was very wise. So I really want to praise everyone who was involved, and, and you guys as well, for all the community feedback you gave in my comment section and other people's comment sections too, and seeing other great uh, content creators getting just as excited as I am to hopefully have like a successful game. Like It feels like we're all in this together, even though, um, you know, obviously a very uh, select few handful of people are, are really involved in the development here. It seems like our voices have been heard, and this is like a dream where it's just like, it just keeps coming more and more true. Almost too good to be true at this moment, but the demo certainly solidified the fact that this game will certainly be coming out, and uh, with Hooded Horse picking up so many wonderful different developers from the folks making, I believe it's Falling Frontier or Fallen Frontier, correct me if I'm wrong, and also of course Against the Storm and Mars Tactics, and there, there's lots of big and small games where they seem, um, you know, a little more simple to understand and, and get into, and other games that are very complex yet that you can learn over time, and I think Manor Lords is certainly one of those games, almost feeling like workers and resources Soviet Republic, 
compared to city skylines like it, it seems like this will take a lot more uh, time to learn and to master and is a game that will be just gorgeous to be in and where I would actually very much care about all of the cities that I build all the people who would be in them and to try to build not only functional cities but beautiful cities in places that look gorgeous and um, you know again th this is old footage of me playing from about a year and a half ago um, still just amazing to see how the fog and the trees and everything just looks beyond ridiculous. Um, there's where we can see our multiple uh, campaigns, which again is all subject to change for this game. Uh, we have the Robber Baron, Realm Conquest, and Rise to Prosperity, showcasing again that there's kind of like a main story campaign and then ways to either focus on economics or military campaigns. And I really would hope for maybe an editor. A scenario editor, map editor, that type of thing, and more maps in the future. Now, I know there's a lot of great information going on out there that many of you are in discords and follow the developer on Twitter and that there's many a news post here and there and interviews. And um, I believe also there was an interview via Xbox Wire regarding this game, too, that I was looking for uh, and trying to find. But I honestly just got blown away by the trailer and just had to immediately make this before getting into any more interviews or whatnot. I kind of don't want my hopes to be spoiled. I know many people were saying that there's probably not going to be another demo. I believe you're right. There probably won't be. But I can hope, damn it. And I just want to keep keep on believing that we will get another demo for Manor Lords. But... I do want to open up the conversation to everyone below on what you think uh, will happen between now and its release. Will we get multiplayer? Do you think we'll get co-op? Do you think we'll get more portraits for characters and more customization options uh, for our militaries? Of course, they've already shown that we can now kind of custom make uniforms for our soldiers. You know, like, for example, uh, footmen or spearmen will have a little bit of their armor customizable, their uniform and or their shield if they're equipped with one. And uh, you can kind of, you know, pick your colors for your your banner, but then also, of course, pick your colors and design for your troops, too, which is kind of cool. Managing those militias, all amazing. Now, I think we will get a single-player experience. I think um, we will also get a very polished single-player experience and some incredible music for this game, too. Uh, we have a great meme. You all know it. Uh, Tavern Banger here on the channel. In addition to Fritz, uh, there is some wonderful which I could only imagine to be maybe historical Polish music, or at least from some medieval era historical significance from the region. Uh, just incredible soundtrack. I mean, everything here just seems to be cinematic beyond belief. It, uh, again, is a game that I wish Firefly Studios would make for Stronghold. These are the standards I think we should see a lot of our beloved franchises go towards because they're so, I don't know, they're just when you look at it, it's just like, wow. Uh, I mean, from, you know, zooming all the way down to literally seeing people's <laughs> eyelashes and details of their uh, hands and feet and the uniforms that they're wearing, all the way up to zooming out to seeing the weather and uh, it rain or snow and uh, to see all the care, the equal amount of care put into everything. Nothing seems like an afterthought. Everything seems like it's woven in to be a true masterpiece. And that's something that's got me very excited for Manor Lords is just the quality is oozing out of every building construction, out of every uh, everything that has been made in this game. It's just outstanding. And I hope to see much more from this developer and uh, more in the story of what's to come soon for Manor Lords and uh, the development. Now, when we enter early access for this game, again, April 26, 2024, I think it'll be well over a year before we see the game release. And I think that also means about a year for consoles. And I'd be really interested to see how this works for console, although thinking about it, the game is quite fluid and has, uh, you know, say what you want about the recent City Skylines release. I think City Skylines does a very good job of keeping things organized in all the menus that you have to navigate through in order to build a road or a power plant or a bridge or houses or whatnot in that game. I think it's just as good here where things are kind of organized by like residential or production buildings and it's very easy to find. And so I think um, I think games that are strategic games, uh, war, whether or not it's a, a total war game or a city builder, I think those are still best on PC. But I still think console players will be able to play this and enjoy this. And it's nice to see that you won't need a you know four, five, six thousand dollar PC in order to uh, play this on day one. And I hope for a smooth launch. I hope that 
Uh, there will be there will certainly be bugs and there will be issues and I hope that everyone's patient and respectful and reports that immediately and that the developer is able to prioritize and is ready for that and I, I just see nothing but uh, passion and professionalism and uh, pure just absolute love of, of this game that they're making with all the different resources on the map and such like it's all well thought out to be just as economic as it is military and it's just a very interesting game to not just manage like one city but almost an entire region you know all these counties that you can capture in the north and uh, I hope to see like procedurally generated game where we get to uh, you know have a number of maps maybe not just one uh, and maybe not just procedurally generated but I would hope to see uh, different features like for example lakes and rivers and things maybe we can make our own maps map generators but that could be something that we see at release or even past that. Going back to what I said about City Skylines, I honestly think that City Skylines 1 is now fully released. Now that City Skylines 2 has dropped, I think uh, both Colossal Order and Paradox's support of that game is over, so there will be no more real updates, no more DLC, and so that game is now finally finished after, what, eight, almost 10 years? And so now that there's all these DLCs and free roads and things added to it, it's taken almost a decade for a massive group of very talented developers to make that game into something that's very good. And, you know, best wishes for City Skylines 2 to be even better. But, uh, again, it took a very long time for City Skylines 1 to get where it is. And if you look at version 1.0 versus now, you'll see the big differences both in appearance and features. And I think that'll be the same for this game, too. Uh, seeing the pre-beta or the pre-alpha footage blew me away at what kind of mechanics would be featured in this game. Seeing what it looked like at the demo was just like two massive steps forward, almost like a big hop forward. And I hope the next jump between the demo and the uh, early access release is even bigger now that there's been tons of feedback and, uh, you know, like actual true promise brought to the game and people are truly on board to see it succeed. And I think everybody really truly wants Manor Lords to be something that uh, just everyone will love and if there's a problem we work to address it and um, you know uh, it's, it's it's everybody working together and I think that's really the only this is really one of the only games I've felt that um, as well as games like Foundation and whatnot where the communities are very patient and kind and ask for features and if there's a delay or something people are understanding and then try to give as much feedback as they can and um, it's an interesting time. It, it, we it, Games should be really, you make it, I buy it. But uh, it is nice that there is some open dialogue on uh, games being made to where developers are willing to listen and willing to make changes and improvements, add features and game modes based on players really liking it. And, uh, you know, if you go back to a game like Among Us <laughs> from back in the days of 2020, so many little game modes and features and things have been added to that uh, that that developer couldn't even dream about. So I really hope that Manor Lords is one of those games that uh, a bunch of people haven't heard of, and when it releases, like one of my other big favorites coming soon, known as Farthest Frontier, I've got probably over, oh, I don't know, 1,500 hours in that one, or something crazy where I played it for almost an entire month, every day, nonstop. Uh, Farthest Frontier, a, another outstanding game from another outstanding developer that made a game called uh, Grim Dawn. I believe it is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but then it went on to make um, Farthest Frontier and people who had played that game beforehand, which kind of was more like a Diablo, but like Baldur's Gate kind of type thing. I've taken a look at it. I, I, I don't quite play those games, so I'm not exactly sure what you classify that as, but it wasn't a city builder. I mean, they went from making a game that was about, you know, uh, an RPG to a city builder uh, that blew me away, and I'm absolutely in love with it. And so I hope that people who haven't heard about um, <laughs> this game yet and love Farthest Frontier and whatnot really do find it and fall in love with it and that we get an absolute masterpiece that will have cavalry and maybe we'll see catapults and larger military uh, units and whatnot. And there's a lot of questions, you know, and I think that's a good opportunity now in the comments section to question for me to you and for you to question others on like, you know, what... What are we going to see here? Are we going to see cavalry? Will we see catapults? Will we see castle sieges? Will there be river crossings? Will we see large siege equipment, engineers, boiling oil? Will we see things like a uh, truly like a stronghold in 2024 rather than it being back in, what was it, 2001 when that game came out? Will we see massive gatehouses and uh, famine and disease and 
uh, large amounts of uh, enemy uh, foreign invaders from lands far away, such as the Mongolia. Will there be more campaigns like that to defend these lands and have, you know, e almost endless survival modes? I mean, I, I think it's possible. And I think these are questions that are being blown up in their Discord to where they're just saying, maybe not now, maybe later, no. Um, so, yeah. You do me a good favor and let me know what you know down below and also ask more questions of me and of the developer that we can all try to ask in the future if we get an opportunity to do so. Going back to what I said about the Wire interview with Xbox and uh, one of the development team and producer teams, um, this game's got a long way to go, but this game also has come a long way from where it was and started out with a great presentation on day one that just shook me, grabbed me. Like that time I cried in Star Citizen when the uh, Carrick door opened. But we won't talk about that. Squadron 42 is looking good. But anyway, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But this game, you know, certainly hasn't really asked for too much other than your time and attention and an opportunity to play the demo. I, w I really wish if you missed the demo you could make a time machine and go back. And I really hope the developer perhaps drops another demo. But if they have to take all that time to make the game, go for it. If they have to delay past April 24, 2020, or sorry, April 26, 2024, go for it. Delays, I'm fine with. Um, a long early access period, I'm fine with. Um, features moving here and there and roadmaps being extended and things being moved around, totally fine. Please, please let them take their time. And uh, for the development team and for the publishers, take your time. There's certainly a lot of anticipation here, but don't anticipate that as pressure. I think everybody's just wanting this to come out now, because look at everything from the detail on the ground. I can't, I can't believe this is a city builder, and yet a strategy game at the same time, too. It's got just so many things going on, and um, I just want it to be good. And what a gorgeous game it is, too. I feel like sometimes after a military campaign, I just want to build a beautiful city or a gorgeous road and just ride a horse down a hill or something along those lines. Outstanding. The community had a lot of fun with it, with the demo, and uh, the grass is outstanding. Again, I think that's what I'm looking at here and talking about in my other video, and it really reminds me of what I thought was amazing in a game called, again, Farthest Frontier. Grasses and uh, different types of uh, plants and bushes and, and, and everything. Having to be researched and brought in, and having like a spring, summer, uh, autumn and winter cycle and to have the trees and whatnot drop their leaves and to research many different types of trees it's so insane how much goes into game development that we just don't even think about that is just like new standard but yet uh, lo and behold let it be praised all right let me know your questions your comments your impressions oh, wow that guy flexing <laughs> yeah let me let me know what you think down below in the comment section flex on the haters i don't know i'll see you all next time here's the trailer again enjoy you have been chosen to govern a land of great peril and promise. It has suffered long from the scourge of banditry, but there is another threat, an illegitimate baron who claims the northern territories as his own. Will you prove yourself worthy of this honor, or will you perish by the traitor's steel?